Hello and welcome! The Nintendo DS is a system with many faces. To me, the DS was the home for action and RPG games, but to others it was a home for more puzzles and casual style of games. Outside of Nintendogs, which I really enjoyed, I didn't know that these games even existed, at least not until recently when I got my hands on Picross DS. And I enjoyed it so much that when I saw that Picross 3D was on the soon-to-be decommissioned Wii U eShop, I had to get it before the shop was shut down. So today, I wanted to share with you my experience of exploring the more casual side of the DS game catalog. Today's video is sponsored by 16-Bit Store. Over the years, we have developed styluses for all of Nintendo's systems, from the original DS all the way to the new 2DS XL and even the Wii U. So if you need a new set of styluses for your own systems, why not visit 16bitstore.com today and get 15% off your next order with offer code 16BITREVIEW when you order two or more items. My little adventure into the more casual side of DS games started when I was given Petcross DS from a family member who knew I enjoyed Nintendo games. I knew of the Picross series up to this point, but from outside of Twilight Princess Picross on 3DS, which I got for free from my Nintendo, I didn't really have much experience with this series of games. And after I started playing Picross DS, I became disappointed in myself for not getting this series sooner, because I absolutely love the Picross formula. These puzzles just scratch a puzzle-solving logical itch that I didn't know I had before now. I love just how much variety you can get out of changing a simple image around that you're trying to solve for. And if the puzzle itself is a little difficult to get started, then the hidden wheel is a great way to get your foot in the puzzle's metaphorical door. The game absolutely takes advantage being on a game console with its available controller, but I also like the fact that if the conventional controls are too complicated, the DS Touch controls works well enough to get you started. And while I do wish that the music had a little more variety to it rather than four songs, and the board's design is contrasted a little better on the DS's screen, especially the originals, overall, Picross on the DS is a very easy to pick up and play game, which I can easily recommend to almost everyone. But as much as I do like this game, there is one distinction I want to make about it. Picross DS is a Picross game on the DS, not a Picross game for the DS. And I feel that this distinction is important because while Picross DS is a very good and recommendable game, this game and its design works well whether or not it's on a DS or an equivalent console. Sure, it does try to take advantage of the TDS's touchscreen and various other little features like rumble. But the way it's implemented is clunky and honestly so hard to use that I don't personally bother with it. I feel this game needed to be on a bigger and more detailed screen and it appears that the developers even knew this since all of the dedicated and focused touch mini games that are included always appear on a much smaller board than what the game allows for in the main puzzles. Again, I like this game, and if you are a fan of the Picross series and wanted more puzzles to solve, then you can easily pick up and play this game. But after playing Picross DS, I kind of felt lacking and wanting a little more, perhaps 
a game that's a little more suitable to my favorite portable. Obviously, this game would need to use smaller boards or perhaps incorporate 3D to get around this limitation. And maybe a better use of the touchscreen. And apparently I wasn't the only person to actually think this. Since in 2009, HAL Laboratories released Picross 3D. A Picross game that was made for the Nintendo DS. The principles of Picross 3D is the same as normal Picross, solving puzzles using logic and numbers. However, rather than highlighting the blocks to make an image, in Picross 3D you are removing blocks to reveal an image, much like sculpting or chipping away at rock or wood. And I have to say, Hal did a fantastic job revamping the game to work on this new form factor. Since the blocks are only really big enough to hold one number at a time, rather than cramming more numbers in like you would normally expect to see in Picross, uh, what they do this time is they add symbols to the numbers to let you know how many blocks are needed in this puzzle, or in this row, and how they are broken up. Leaning on familiar patterns to assist the players to figure out which blocks are more likely to not get chiseled away and which ones should be kept. And don't think that the larger puzzle sizes and simpler patterns make the game easier since they add an entire third axis which adds an additional layer of difficulty. But all this culminates into what can only be described as one of my favorite puzzle games on the DS. The touch controls are perfect and works exactly as you'd expect it would. I enjoy the little details like the slider to view the individual layers that hold once you let go and the expected patterns which you eventually learn and figure out as you go throughout the game. I love all the aha moments when you realize that, well, if there's four here, that means that this piece gets to go there, and with that piece, and this can go there. Oh my god, so sorry, I got a little distracted. As I said, Picross just scratches this logical puzzle solving itch for me and I feel that Picross 3D does a much better job at this than Picross DS does. But that's not to say that Picross 3D is a better game than Picross DS. While from a gameplay perspective, Picross 3D is in my view a superior game, I really can get my head around that 3D axis and just having a random on it makes it my favorite I can understand how adding a third axis could confuse some people and others might prefer the more simple nature of Picross DS. And I have to be honest, from an aesthetic perspective, Picross DS is the prettier game and the easier title to figure out what the shapes that you're actually making are. However, at the end of the day, no matter which way you dice it, both of these games are great and in my view, should be in everyone's collection. With that said, you may want to look for these games on newer platforms or look for the deal, as they're a lot more expensive than I thought they would be. I feel that these games should be around the $10 to $15 mark, and for that price, they are well worth your money. But anymore, and you're starting to get into Mario Kart and Pokemon territory. And while I do really enjoy these games, and if I was to somehow lose access to them, I would feel their absence. I just don't think I would have gone Picross over Pokemon. But anyways, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you have yourself a great day, and as always, take care.